Good evening and welcome to the February 22nd, 2016 meeting of the Florissant City Council. So I came in today, I saw a beautiful full moon rising over the eastern part of Florissant, which I believe is the snow moon in February. So we begin the proceedings, so happy snow moon everyone. As we begin this evening, I'd ask you to join, stand and join the council in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Madam Clerk, would you be so kind as to call the roll? Lee? Here. Jones? Here. Egan? Here. Caputa? Here. Childra? Here. Hankey? Here. Pagano? Here. Schmidt? Here. Sam? Let the record reflect that a quorum is present. Item number three, Mr. Caputa makes a motion to approve the meeting minutes and executive meeting minutes from the February 8th, 2016 meeting. That is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And the meeting minutes shall be approved. Item number four, hearings from citizens. This is a portion of the meeting where you get to address the council. If you wish to do so, I would ask that you would complete a speaker's card and the speaker's cards are located on the table next to the entrance of the chambers. If you complete that and um, give that to Mr. Hessel, he will forward it to me. You have three minutes to say whatever you desire to the council. And again, this is not a question and answer period. So if you want a, an answer from a particular topic you have, see myself, one of the council people or the mayor after the meeting. Wesley Thomas, Wesley Thomas. You would have, yeah. If you're going to vote, if you're going to speak about the uh, the tower again, you, if you want to wait till that part of the meeting, we'd be fine to do that. John Inglemeyer, good evening, Mr. Inglemeyer. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and home address for the record, I'd be appreciative. Good evening, John Inglemeyer, 1281 Graham Road. Thank you, sir. You may begin. This evening on the agenda, Bill Number 9162, I'd like to be read in full or a detailed explanation by Mr. Tim Barrett that's sitting in the back of the room. On the particular 986 resolution, I'd like a full detailed explanation, when in fact we've had individuals who have sat on this East Way Gateway Coordinating Council and has really done nothing for North County until now we see this and how is this particularly going to apply to Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand, when in fact we have a major problem at Lindbergh and Florissant Road. One of the other questions I have, no response is necessary, is that at one of the committee work sessions, crime-free residential rent, rental housing pr uh, program, the last sentence, I'm gonna abbreviate, says here, to decrease the incidence of public safety violations and criminal activity in rental properties. The other day I was driving down through Florissant and I came across with an individual, part of the member of the council, that flew by me and I do the speed limit. And it's like, how do you, in terms of when you swear yourself in, to abide by the constitution and the ordinances of Florissant? Is speeding not a crime? Murder's a crime, speeding's a crime. We have to look at this and say, how do we justify this? Not throwing rocks, I'm proactive, but this is targeted to rental property when in fact other citizens down Graham Road at 7.15, 7.20 in the morning pass me up doing 45 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. I'm on Florissant Road yesterday. I'm passed by six cars. When I leave here and I go down Florissant Road towards uh, 270, cars speed past me. It's a violation of the law. They're not renters, they're owners of cars. Are they abiding by the law? Are they committing a crime? I'm very disappointed in the rental program when it, it targets and identifies rental properties as the problem caused. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Engelmeyer. Kevin O'Donnell. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. If you'd be so kind as to state your name and home address for the record, I'd be appreciative, and then we'll have your three minutes. My name. <clears throat> I'm, my name's Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane. I'm here to speak about something that happened over a year ago. Well, not quite a, not quite a year ago. It's, it was last summer. I was, uh, I, there was a public hearing for Jimmy John's. And there was mention that it was going to be, the building was, the bricks were gonna be stained black. And I, I asked what the difference between stain and paint was. And they said, well, you in fact told me that stain does not chip, it doesn't flake, paint does. Okay. Uh, I was told numerous times, and I've asked about having this, uh, this ordinance in the city either amend it delete it or enforced and I was totally ignored. It's been brought to my attention that Jimmy John's has been painted black, not stained, but painted black. Now I ask you, the council, the mayor, if, if somebody were to tell you that the building was gonna be stained and your building superintendent or your building advisor, whatever, said it was gonna be stained, then they used paint. What is the rectification, what are the results of this? Is, that, is there anything, I don't know what I would do, I would fire the person. Whoever was responsible for lying to me, I would, I would file, I would tell them that there's no excuse for this, you've messed up in the past, and this is it. But no, I bet that person stays here. And the thing about it is, it's wrong. I talked a month ago about uh, transparency and honesty. I was told, I was told after, through the uh, mayor's announcements that I was, there is transparency. They don't hide things from us. This is hidden. When were you gonna tell us that the building was gonna be painted when we saw it? And this to me is, it's just an infraction of the law and it should be taken, it should be dealt with accordingly as to a personnel department or to the disciplinary actions of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Dell. And as a side note, that's in my ward and I'll, I'll look into that tomorrow. Thank you, Your Honor, I appreciate that. All right, next item on the agenda is communications, and there are none. Item number six, public hearings. We have no public hearings this evening. Item number seven, old business. Bill number 9162. I'll make a motion for a second reading of Bill 9162. That is seconded by Mr. Shildroff. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor of second reading? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a second time. Ordinance approving the fluorescent complete streets policy. Sure. I'll make a motion for a third reading seconded by Mr. Caputa. Any discussion on a third reading? All in favor of a third reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I will make a motion prior to the third. Oh, go ahead and make the third reading. Ordinance approving the fluorescent complete streets policy. Is Mr. Barrett here? Yeah. I'm sorry, Dennis. I'll make a motion that we amend the agenda to uh, have Mr. Barrett, the city engineer, discuss this. To suspend the rules, okay. <laughs> to suspend the rules. Thank you, Mr. Shilroff, for seconding. All in favor of rule suspension? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Barrett, if you're present, if you can please step up here. There he is. I didn't see him in the back there. Mr. Perry, if you'd be so kind as to discuss for the citizens the, uh, the safe streets policy or ordinance, I'd appreciate it. We mentioned our gas tanks. Again, we have gas tanks. 
Good evening, Council. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to briefly talk upon the Complete Streets Ordinance that you are considering at this point in time. Um, this is an initiative that the city has been looking at, and we've had a few folks that have been working with us to kind of pursue this measure, of, namely uh, TrailNet and AARP. And we've got a few representatives from AARP sitting in the uh, crowd behind us tonight showing their support for this. Well, a complete street means that it's a street that is safe for all users, regardless of their abilities, regardless of their means of transportation. And what the Complete Streets Ordinance does is it essentially sets a framework for a lot of the things that we're already doing, provides backbone to that, and gives us direction, provides some accountability to ensure that we meet those goals. Uh, basically, the ordinance encourages improving safety through safe design, efficient access, reduced congestion, through, the, you know, through providing alternate means of transportation, and improved health and quality of life and reduction of emissions by increasing and encouraging folks to get out and walk and providing the facilities to walk, bike, and, and do what they need to do. Florissant's a very diverse city. We have people from every age group and every ability. We have folks that are in wheelchairs, folks that can't see, and they all need to have the same ability to use our streets and sidewalks just like anybody else. So as part of this, we take this ordinance and it helps sets forth how we go about accomplishing this. And we can go accomplishing this by retrofitting existing sidewalk, filling in the gaps between areas that are cl very close but there's no sidewalk there, working with development when it comes in to ensure that we have efficient access, that, that ADA compliant facilities are provided in their design, and looking at where we're doing street projects to make sure that everything is compliant and, and bringing in where feasible other, other alternatives there, sidewalk, bike lanes, etc., to offer that access for everybody. Um, again, a lot of this work we're already doing, it really provides an additional backbone and, and direction into how we continue to do this. Uh, additionally, on a national level, there's a lot of focus on this sort of effort, and it's very evident when you look at grant applications that this is where the dollars are at to help bring federal dollars into our city. For, at a national level, people are buying into this concept, they're seeing the benefits, and therefore it is encouraged, in fact, almost required to have this line of thinking and these components in any project. So not only is it a great avenue for our residents to enjoy many amenities in the city, but it also helps bring federal dollars to the city. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. Does anyone on the council have any questions for Mr. Barrett? Thank you very much. Before we take a bottom vote, I would also add that I know that there were folks that had consternation regarding our, the way that the street proposal we just passed was, was, was promoted and this should give them good rest. Prior to a final vote being taken, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Let me let me do this. Is that okay? No. Uh, no, I'm not ready. I'll tell you when I'm ready. I'm doing my best. I got bad fingers tonight. All right, if you'd be so kind as to state your name and address, your home address for the record, I'd be appreciative. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Graham Road. Very In good. light Thank of you, your sir. definition of consternation, I don't think that necessarily applies. The reason I asked Mr. Baird to come up and speak was because of this proposal that was introduced on January 21st through Mr. Gerald, through Mr. Uh, Barrett, complete streets ordinance. The third paragraph of this memo came into a complete streets ordinances, directs the city to routinely look at, for opportunities and enable safe access for all users. <clears throat> So far, I've not heard anything about funding other than the fact we're applying for a grant. Will this be implemented without the grant? How much money will it cost? Ten steps to creating a project plan. Explain the project to key citizens and discuss key components. The second item on that, in terms of a ten-step program, project plan, is define the roles and responsibilities of our street department, our maintenance department, and our public works. Do we have enough staffing for that? Is this going to be allocated again, or is this one of the projects like we want to move ahead, like the Weber building, and get nothing for our money? This is the taxpayer's money, and we should be cognitive of that. We just passed an ordinance endorsing the streets, although it says safe streets. It shouldn't save the streets, as you indicated, Mr. Egan. 
This is another, again, appropriation of funds. In that second paragraph indicates that <clears throat> through the street program, through the street projects that passed, is that could be funded from that revenue, the assessment of taxes for this project. There should be a hold off of a, of a kickoff meeting to describe the vision and the strategy and the project vision, the roles and responsibilities. We should develop a scope statement, understanding the, the principle and the purpose of this as what Mr. Andy, uh, Barrett indicated in his presentation. Develop scope baselines. What are we supposed to do in the objective? Who's gonna maintain these byways, uh, streets? Are we gonna create new green areas through various neighborhoods? I don't know that, that's why I was asking. Step six, develop a schedule and cost baselines. I've not heard anything about cost. We're walking in this blind. You, the city council, should be asking this, not me. How much is the cost of this program? Does anyone know? Is there a breakdown? Is there a definition of the, of the cost? And my city council is sitting there with nothing. I've not heard any one comment about this other than the fact it was presented on the agenda at the last meeting. Number seven, create baseline management plans. I understand Mr. Barrett spoke this evening. I'm assuming he's the project manager or at least the overseer of this, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know that for sure. Does he have enough time on his plate because the city engineer is quite busy? Or do we hire somebody else, which is not in the budget or was even discussed at the budget time? Develop the staffing plan, which coincides to what I just said with Mr. Barrett and the Public Works Department. At the budget meetings, several of you have questioned, questioned over and over again, the Public Works Area Department and the funding and the staffing of that and how it fell short and that we were gonna appropriate money and then we took away money and then we finally settled on the Public Works issues. We're gonna hire more inspectors, more staff to facilitate the, the inspectors. Analyze the project quality and risks. I've not heard anything about that, other than the fact that I think it's a great idea, and yet the other hand is I, I say that because I don't know the whole project. I've not seen a layout. I've not seen any uh, directional streets. I don't see, I, I, I've not seen anything on this. And I'm a citizen. I attend these council meetings regularly to understand and better approach the city council in defining their role and their fiduciary responsibility. And step 10, communicate. That is a main, main role of this city council is to communicate with the public. That's why I asked Mr. Barrett to come up and explain, and not just read the, the ordinance or the bill in title only, which I think we, the citizens, and even the viewers at home deserve. Because they're sitting at home, and I have seen other bills passed through this council, and I should have spoke, and I didn't. I decided this evening, looking at the agenda again, to speak and to approach the city council with the questions I have proposed this evening. I would appreciate an answer or response or some kind of indication of the funding of this besides the grants. If we apply for the grants, how much is the cost of this plan and project? And I am an AARP member as well. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, John, you made comment <clears throat> uh, how we never ask questions, Mr. Inglemeyer. Well, last week, uh, I thought I'd do that. I thought I'd ask a question. So I called up our state rep that you brought up about a week ago about some housing questions. She said she never heard of you. Her secretaries never talked to you. She spoke to everybody in her office, and they said they've never even heard of a John Engelmeyer, period. That is the question that I asked, and I got my answer, and I thought that's what it would be. I don't know what you mean by that, Mr. Jones. It has nothing to do with this bill, but I did talk to, to uh, a state representative who represents this district in, uh, I believe it was a discussion room five, okay. meeting room five, below the Capitol building. And, and the individual was present for a nice presentation and uh, I did speak to that individual about this. So I am not fabricating anything. I spoke about it and I did present my name. She knows who I am. Thank, thank you, Mr. Engelmeyer. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make comment before a final vote is taken? 
Say none. Clerk, please poll the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Huda? Yes. Childra? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Cyan? Bill number 9162 passes and becomes ordinance 8204, 8204. Bill number 9163, Mr. Schildroff makes a motion for a second reading. That is seconded by Mr. Hinky. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bill a second time. Ordinance authorizing a special use permit to RF Alternatives, LLC, DBA Selective Solutions, LLC, to allow for the construction and operation of the telecommunications facility for the property located at 837 Dunn Road. Mr. Sheldrop makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion on a third reading? Just one second, sir. All in favor of third reading? Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill for a third time. Ordinance authorizing a special use permit to RF Alternatives, LLC, DBA Selective Solutions, LLC, to allow for the construction and operation of the telecommunications facility for the property located at 837 Dunn Road. Is there anyone in the, studio, in the audience who would like to make comment on this? Come on up, sir, before our final vote is taken on this. And, sir, if you'll give me your, uh, your, your name and your home address, I'd appreciate it. Give me one second to get the mics on. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. It's Wesley Thomas, 90 okay. Mishawal Court. Very good. Um, good evening. I spoke to you guys at the February 8th meeting and I uh, expressed concern and opposition for the construction of a telecommunications tower at what is essentially North County Christian School. Uh, I wanted to restate my position. Um, I my hope is that you guys didn't take a vote today, um, but I had three primary concerns. Uh, the first concern was that there are design conflicts with the current zoning laws and the tower doesn't meet certain setback uh, requirements, which is the reason why they need this special use permit. Uh, I don't think they provide enough evidence. I don't think that it warrants an uh, exception to the to the rule. Uh, the second one that I had was about public uh, safety concerns. Uh, I know Mr. Bain last time said these towers do not collapse. Uh, I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to uh, look at the news uh, article that I had mentioned, but it was proof that shows that at times it, these towers do collapse. And in this particular case, it was in St. Louis, Missouri. It was on Fox 2 News, happened in 2013, and it was due to high wind. Um, the second one was about access to this facility, and I looked at a number of towers online. You can just go to Google Maps and look at satellites. Most of them have what appears to be uh, a, a, a climbing deterrent structure. Either it's a brick wall, uh, it's not a six-foot uh, fence. And I know Mr. Bean stated that he would update his plan to an eight-foot fence, and I'm not sure who he submitted that plan to, I haven't seen it, um, so I, I would like the council to maybe look into that. Uh, and third, the, and which is one of the biggest things, so I'm a parent and I have three kids that currently go to North County Christian and I'm planning on sending my fourth son there. My feeling is that the tower will definitely decrease the property value of the school. I also feel that it will reduce the enrollment of the school. And I had an uh, unofficial, um, a casual conversation with an official at the school when he stated, if the tower makes one or two parents leave, students leave, it would not have been worth it. If you look at the monetary compensation that they're gonna get, and you juxtapose that to the students that either might leave or that might not enroll, uh, I don't think it would have been financially worth it. And I get the school, man. My son's been there since kindergarten. I know they are under a tough financial burden. But I think once the tower is built, and it is a massive tower, 120 feet. It will have four series, four platforms for a triangular uh, set of antennas. It will be a massive, massive pole. Uh, and, if you, and I did Google Maps looking for one similar and I couldn't find one. I mean, there are a lot of poles out there. This, I don't think the school is making a mistake. It's right in front of the school. When they, they give tours all the time. There's a sign that says, hey, if you want to enroll, ask for a tour, and I know the the former principal is now the person that's responsible for the tours. I don't think they know. And I wanted to, to mention something else, and here's how, why they might not know. If you look at the documents in the design, it mentions a disguised tower. Well, I took a look at the meeting minutes from the Planning and Zoning Commission, and they discussed that. And in the meeting minutes, and I'll read it to you, 
it actually won't be a disguise tower. They, and Mr. Bean stated that he used the term loosely, and here's what it means. It states, um, he, he did state, and he is referring to Mr. Bean, that the original use, the originally used the term disguise structure because many municipalities use the term when a pole serves an additional use. So they are replacing an existing light pole. And because it will have dual use, he used the term disguise. So these antenna will not be disguised. It'll be absolutely evident. So I've seen it to where it's disguised and it's a flagpole and it's kind of white and you can't make out the, uh, the antenna on the inside. I think when it's constructed, uh, it will um, force some parents to make some, some tough choices. And I think it would definitely impact the student enrollment. Um, I also believe that once residents, I mean, because it's, it's really near homes, uh, you can do a Google search to see it. Once they find out and they see it, uh, I think there will be some opposition. Also at our last meeting, um, uh, Mrs. Damp, who is the uh, uh, director of operations, is an absolutely fantastic lady. Um, she mentioned that they will send an email to the school, I've yet to the parents. Uh, I've yet to receive that email notifying the parents that they are in the process of constructing a cell phone tower. I think once they do, I'm not the only parent that will be, um, I'll say, borderline outrage. Outrage is a very strong word, but with, that has deep concerns about the construction. Once they do that and once it's built, I think they will see the reaction of the parents. And in, in my opinion, it, it, it will cause even tougher financial conditions for the school. So I know you guys have third reading. I would ask that if maybe if you don't take a vote today, hold off. If we can get that notification to the parents and you guys can see the additional feedback that some parents will have, because I've had a conversation with a few of them. Um, you guys are, are the only ones stopping and preventing this tower from being built and the, the devaluation of what I consider a very sound private school to North County Christian that is already going through a, a tough uh, economic time. Uh, with that, thank you for, for hearing me out. Thank you for allowing me to speak, and I, I would ask that if, if you guys don't vote today. I think you guys need to hear from a few more parents. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have already taken a vote for a third reading, which has passed, and the bill has been read for a third time, so we're going to re be ready to take our final vote right now. I appreciate your concern, and I'll chat with you in person after the meeting if you stick around. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to make comment on this bill before a final reading? Madam Clerk, please call the council. Your Honor. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildreth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Gano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Bill number 9163 passes and becomes ordinance 8205-8205. Bill number 9165, Mr. Schildroff makes a motion for a second reading. That is seconded by Mr. Caputo. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bill a second time. Ordinance, <coughs> ordinance authorizing a transfer of special use permit number 8068 from Fat Boys Barbecue LLC to Shomo Barbecue LLC for the operation of a carryout restaurant located at 300 St. Ferdinand. Mr. Schildroff makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Siam. Any discussion? All in favor of a third reading? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bill a third time. Ordinance authorizing a transfer of special use permit number 8068 from Fat Boys Barbecue LLC to Shomo Barbecue LLC for the operation of a carryout restaurant located at 300 St. Ferdinand. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please call the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Puda? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Yes. Bill number 9165 passes and becomes ordinance 8206. 8206. Item number eight, new business. Board appointments. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, 
At your suggestion, I'd like to appoint uh, Ginger Molnix to the Disability and Awareness Commission. I will make that motion to appoint Ms. Molnix to that commission and is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the appointment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the appointment shall be made. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other board appointments? And then number 10 resolutions. Resolution 986. Resolution supporting the City of Florissant application to East West Gateway uh, Council of Governments Transportation Improvement Program, fiscal year 17 through 20, for improvements to the intersection of North Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand Streets. Mr. Cyan makes a motion for a second reading of the resolution. That is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor of a second reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution supporting the City of Florissant application to the East West Gateway Council of Governments Transportation Improvement Program, fiscal year 17 through 20, for improvements to the intersection of North Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand Streets. Mr. Jones, make, Jones makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Caputo. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputo? Yes. Childra? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. I am. Please read your bill. Resolution supporting Resolution. the City of Florissant application to the East West Gateway Council of Governments Transportation Improvement Program, fiscal year 17 through 20, for improvements to the intersection of North Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand Streets. Prior to a final vote being taken on this resolution, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Step forward, sir. Mr. O'Donnell, you'll state your name and address for the record. I'd appreciate it. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane, Ward 4. Go ahead, sir. Um, I, I'm against this 100%. First of all, it's a grant that we're gonna, that will be reimbursed possibly up to 80%. And will be reimbursed at least 20%. That's what this says. Okay, I have, that's not the big problem. My problem is over a year ago, probably 15 months ago, I had when uh, Culver's was going in and I had brought this up to the council at the public hearing for car for Culver's and again later when they w were going for the sign signage and everything and I, I asked what's going to happen with the intersection at St. Ferdinand and Highway 67 I said the signals are inadequate there's no solid green left turn arrow it's all flashing yellow. It's it's go go at your the best you can to get your get across without getting hit from people at Culver's, or getting hit from people going to Culver's, coming out of Culver's, crossing over, driving eastbound. And I was told by a number of at least two council members here that told me that this isn't my business. It's not the city's business. It belongs to MoDOT. It's MoDOT's business. Well, I read the, the little memo thing on the side of, the, of this resolution. It says this application includes the design and constructions of improvements to the intersection of North Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand Street. The, ex the existing intersection configuration and signal timing result in congestion and lengthy delays for vehicles traveling southbound on St. Ferdinand Street particularly those turning on to turning left onto highway 67 additionally there are no sidewalks connecting from st ferdinand park to the sidewalk along north highway 67 the proposed project will modify the traffic signal and potentially the lane configuration at the intersection an alternative access to st ferdinand park from st jean will be considered to spread the traffic between the two signals, signalized intersections. ADA compliant pedestrian sidewalk and crosswalks will be constructed to make the connection between North Highway 67 and St. Ferdinand Park. Applications are due by March 3rd, 2015. Maybe it's 2016. So I respectfully request three readings at the February 27th, February 22nd, 10, 10, 
1016? That must be 2016. Um, uh, if you, you have any questions, please feel to contact me at 839-7643. Thank you. Timothy Barrett. Now, that intersection is not our business. It's not city's business. Sidewalks are. Intersection signaling is not. If you do this, you're going back on what you told me and back in uh, last, in 2015 or 14 when uh, Culver's, before Culver's went in. And this is what I mean about transparency, hiding things and not telling the residents what's going on. So I know I won't get an answer here, but how can we be taking care of the signaling and everything when it belongs to MoDOT and St. Ferdinand belongs to St. Louis County? My case is closed. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please pull the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yep. Huda? Yes. Shildreth? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Resolution 986 passes. Resolution 987. Resolution supporting the City of Florissant application to St. Louis County Gov uh, Department of Public Health Waste Reduction Grant Program. I'll make a motion for a second reading this resolution. That is seconded by Mr. Henke. Is there any discussion? All in favor of second reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the resolution for a second time. Resolution supporting the City of Florissant application to St. Louis County Department of Public Health Waste Reduction Grant Program. I'll make a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Mr. Schmidt. Is there any discussion on third reading? All in favor of third reading, roll call vote, please. <laughs> Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childreth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Siam? Resolution supporting the City of Florida, St. Louis County Department of Public Health Waste Reduction Grant Program. Prior to a final vote being taken on this resolution, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make comment? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Fuda? Yes. Childra? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Cyan. Resolution 987 passes. Item number 11, bills for first reading. Bill number 9166. Ordinance amending ordinance number 8197, appointing nine registered voters to a redistricting commission by removing Bernice Foley and re representing Ward 8 and adding Steve Podry. Ms. Mr. Schmidt makes a motion for a second reading that is seconded by Mr. Lee. Is there any discussion? All in favor of second reading? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Please read the bill a second time. Ordinance amending ordinance number 8197, appointing nine registered voters to a redistricting commission by removing Bernice Foley representing Ward 8 and by adding Steve Podry. Mr. Schmidt makes a motion for a third reading. That is seconded by Ms. Pagano. Is there any discussion on third reading? Go ahead. Thank Mr. you, Mr. President. No, I just wanted to bring the council up to speed on this. Um, I know Bernice was appointed originally uh, due to some health problems with Bernice. Um, she informed me and she also informed the mayor that she would probably be unable to uh, fulfill her tasks on this committee, which I appreciated. So I reached out and uh, uh, got compliance with Steve Podry to take over and I think Steve will do a great job. So. I appreciate the convenience for the council, but uh, I think this is a necessary change because we need the nine members. We need to get this done. So uh, that's why this change is happening. So thank you. Clerk, please take a roll call vote for a third reading. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childra? Yes. Hanke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Cyan? Yes. Please read the bill a third time. Ordinance amending ordinance number 8197, appointing nine registered voters to a redistricting commission by removing Bernice Foley representing Ward 8 and adding Steve Podry. Prior to a final vote being taken on this bill, is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment? 
Seeing none, clerk, please call the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childress? Yes. Henke? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Sam? Bill 9166 passes and becomes ordinance 8207-8207. Item number 12, council announcements. Mr. Jones. Yes, I'd like to uh, let everybody know, don't forget about team. Uh, there's always somebody hungry morning, noon, or night, you guys. You guys got some extra change around the house or a couple extra canned goods please take it up uh, it'll go to a good place and that is team our food pantry at 265 st catherine you guys i also would like to uh say thank you for all the people that showed up for the neighborhood watch meeting i also would like to give uh, carol webb my ward captain over the neighborhood watch a shout out she works very hard uh Spends a lot of time on the streets trying to recruit people, and uh, it's really paying off for us. So uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Schmidt. Thank you. I just want to reiterate, I, I mentioned it last uh, council meeting, and I'll do it again, and I'll do it again uh, the next meeting, but uh, Ward 8 is going to have a um, night out, or not a night out, neighborhood <laughs> watch. <laughs> Having those senior moments. Uh, neighborhood watch program or neighborhood watch meeting. Uh, it's tentatively scheduled and I think we're working on the date, but I believe it's going to be March 31st. It'll probably be up at the J.J. Egan Center. Uh, more news to follow, but the cards will be sent out. But just to make everybody aware that Ward 8 will be having a neighborhood watch uh, meeting that night. Thank you. Ms. Pagano. Yes, the Floors and Citizen Emergency Management Commission will be hosting a class to become a weather spotter for the National Weather Service. The class will be at the James J. Egan Center in the Arts and Craft Room on March, Monday, March 28th from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. If you'd like more information, you can contact Officer Dehart at the Floors and Police Department. Thank you, Ms. Pagano. In Ward Number Three, uh, I just received a call the other day from Miss Sakura, Diana Sakura, who's been our Ward Captain for Neighborhood Watch for some time, and Diana does a great job for us. However, she has had some issues with her family that she's got to attend. If you're in Ward Number Three and you would like to step up and be the Ward Captain from Ward Three, please call me. We'd like to make sure we get that position filled as soon as we can. Uh, next thing on my agenda is, as I've been talking about the last few weeks, the St. Ferdinand Charity Basketball Tournament and barbecue begins this Saturday and Sunday runs. We'll have food ready at 10 a.m. Games begin at 8 a.m. and will run till after mass. It, this benefit benefits Nicholas Handing. He's a Ward 5 resident, six months old, who has cancer. I would ask you, can you zoom in on me on this? A picture of Nicholas here. And again, him and his uh, family just found out within the last six weeks that he is diagnosed with cancer at six months of age. So please find it in your heart, come out and visit us. The food is fantastic. Uh, it's a great time. It's absolutely a great, um, a great family to benefit. I want to thank the mayor and council who are each becoming sponsors for this event. And we'll see you over the next uh, four weekends. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, Mayor's comments. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I start, I'd like to ask the rules to be suspended so Mr. Barrett can assist me in, uh, in talking about uh, Duchesne Park. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. That is seconded by Mr. Hankey. Any discussion? All in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Barrett, if you'll once again a close approach the lectern. While he's coming up, uh, we did host a foos wrap meeting at Egan Center that was well attended last week. Uh, talked about the uh, remediation that's occurring along Coldwater Creek, and they also talked about the uh, previous remediation uh, at the Laddie Avenue site so that the source of the uh, material has been removed, and now they're removing the residual material. Um, I also attended a meeting uh, with uh, Senator Nadal Saturday. Uh, we talked about uh, her concerns, uh, which have been well publicized about Westlake, and now it's including Coldwater Creek. 
She's introduced a bill that uh, I believe uh, is uh, inappropriate, uh, maybe somewhat sensational. The city engineer, Mr. Barrett, and I have tried to stay uh, pragmatic, looking for practical results and uh, real uh, progress in uh, removing any future um, cause for concern uh, due to the Manhattan Project back in World War II. We believe that the uh, uh, Corps of Engineers, the EPA, uh, the FUSREP people are all doing a good job. They're uh, removing the material away from uh, our area. Uh, it's being, uh, uh, I guess, a ship by train to the west uh, to a safe uh, vault location. Uh, they're replacing that material with, uh, with, with clean fill. Um, and uh, we, I mean, we continue to be uh, sympathetic and concerned about those that have been exposed since World War II, uh, but most of that uh, material has been flushed down to the Miss Missouri River, down into the Gulf of Mexico, and diluted so much that it no longer serves any kind of threat to humans. And uh, what it remains is some residue that's been in pockets here and there, and they've used radioactive testing material, uh, testing devices to look for it, found it, now they're removing it. Uh, Mr. Barrett, do you have anything to add to that? Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just to kind of sum up the work that's being done out of Duchesne right now, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers contractor, which is CBI, they mobilized out to the park last week, and they've been prepping the areas for work. They're going to work on two areas right now. Uh, the one that's actually within the park is behind the pavilion and off to the right if you're looking at it. And there's a smaller one on the Archdiocese property straight back from the pavilion but well away from any of the areas that are uh, uh, used by the public. However, uh, in a conservative move, we would like to keep the park shut down during the operation uh, for a number of reasons, safety with vehicles being a num number of the points there. Uh, during this work, the Corps will be providing air monitoring, they'll be providing dust control, they'll be cleaning off the trucks as they leave the site, they will be screening along the roads uh, on a weekly basis to make sure that nothing is getting out of there. So they take that material and they will haul it out, as the mayor indicated, they'll take it to a uh, facility where it'll be loaded onto a train and shipped out, I believe, to Idaho to a licensed facility uh, that's capable of long-term storage for this. Hopefully we can have this work done and, and wrapped up in the area restored by late spring, early summer, and restore the park back to full use. Uh, later this year, they will begin their next round of sampling, which will be the area from St. Dennis all the way to, I think, Old Halls Ferry. I might be, mm -hmm. might be wrong, it might be New Halls Ferry, but one of the Halls Ferries. So it'll be a thorough sampling, much like they've been doing already, but they'll be moving further that way and believe they expect to have all sampling and hopefully all the areas cleaned up by 2020. It's been, your, it's been their experience that the farther away they get from the source, the, the, less, uh, the less they find. That's what the Corps has indicated as well. Right. Um, we, it's, it's possible that we uh, will have some testing and some remediation at the Coldwater Commons Park. Uh, since that is a relatively low activity park, we most likely would close that park as well. <clears throat> However, if we do uh, find it necessary to do some remediation in St. Ferdinand Park, we're going to have to take a hard look at that park. Uh, I'd uh, be reluctant to close that entire park. We may have to close sections of that park so that they could uh, safely remove the material, but probably won't, re won't close the entire park since it's so big and has so many uh, varied uses. We will evaluate that uh, once we have uh, the test. If, if they do decide, if they if they find any samples that's of concern to them, that that uh, and if they determine they have to remove something, we'll, we'll uh, take a close look at that and and make a de decision then as to what part of that park would have to be closed. Uh, anything else? I don't think there'll be any other city property that would be impacted. Is there? At this point in time, we're not aware of any other properties beyond the ones that are being discussed right now, uh, being Duchesne Park and the city that have any areas that are above mm -hmm. their cleanup goals. Now, uh, they have done some preliminary sampling out at St. Ferdinand. They did that last year, they being the Department of Natural Resources, and nothing of note or of concern was determined during that mm -hmm. time. So we have pre-screened some of those areas as well, and we're hoping to get the full screening as they mm -hmm. move along. But we'll have to address each one on a case-by-case -case basis, depending upon where it's at and what the risks are. I'd like you to do me a favor and reach out to Senator Nadal's office and see if you could set up a meeting with her, you, m myself, and one of her aides, so that, or at least with one of her aides, so that we can 
uh, educate her on our position on that uh, project. Ms. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mayor, if you want to continue with your announcements. Yeah, before I get started, uh, we did have uh, one, a closure of, uh, of a restaurant uh, recently. Uh, uh, been there for quite a long time. It was it, it had a different name before, but uh, lately it's been called Deavers. Um, this is uh, a concern to us, but it's no more concern than other businesses that have gone out of business. Restaurants uh, do come and they do go. Uh, this one, uh, the Gruy. Uh, ownership uh, is very confident that they'll be able to find uh, that there'll be plenty of interest in a, uh, another operator for that property in, in the restaurant capacity and so we're hoping that that uh, gets uh, reoccupied very soon. Um, we're also pleased uh, and congratulate uh, Senator Gina Walsh uh, as she was able to uh, uh, reacquire the remaining funds needed to finish the I-270 project. Uh, the study uh, I-270 was 90% completed, and they suspended it uh, with 10% of the study to go. Uh, and uh, so uh, I want to thank Senator Gina Walsh because she was able to get MoDOT to commit to finishing that study because before they could ever uh, have a project to uh, do improvements to 270, this study would have had to have been completed. Uh, so uh, we're so happy that uh, this study is done, and now when the other funds do become available, we'll have the study completed and be able to move much more swiftly in the future. Uh, the Mayor's Shamrock Ball is uh, scheduled for March 5th. This is the uh, prom of North County. This is a place where you want to see and be seen. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, tuxedos and evening dresses and business clothing or whatever, but it's a pretty, people dress up pretty nice and they kilts. clean up pretty good for this. Uh, for Any this kilts, event. Mayor? Be, are you going to wear a kilt? I have my kilt this year. Mr. Egan is going to wear his kilt, and there may be another, who knows? <laughs> Usually there is at least two kilts at this event. Now what is under the kilt, Mr. Egan? <laughs> <laughs> we are in prime time. Oh, the polar plunge. Could you elaborate on the polar plunge? Uh, you know, the polar plunge is this weekend, the Saturday, and I believe plunging starts at 2 p.m., and there is a significant turnout from the Florissant Police Department being led by Colonel Lowry will be leading the plunge. He's Are also you also plunging, Mr. Jones? Oh, I thought you said me too. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Chief Lowry will be plunging, and he will be leading a contingent of approximately 30 Florissant police officers. There'll be police officers from all over the area uh, plunging as well from the city of Hazelwood has a good contingent. City of Maryland Heights has a good contingent. Uh, Special Olympics is a law enforcement uh, special charity, uh, but there will be a lot of high schools and uh, uh, Randy Orton will be one of the judges, one of the old wrestlers, Randy Orton will be, will be one of the judges. We tried to talk him into plunging, but he said he would judge. Oh, and Eddie the police dog, are we sure? Okay, very good. Eddie the police dog will be fine. So if you want, you can still get in on donations by going to Special Olympics Missouri, and they will, they'll they have a link to, to how you donate if you wish to your favorite charity, which would be Flowers and Police or Eddie the police dog. Uh, leader, leadership comes from the top, and uh, when, the, when the chief is cajoled into uh, taking the dip, uh, then I think we got about 30 people that got cajoled along with him. All those up-and-comers awesome. behind him. <laughs> Uh, please join the uh, council and administration in an a, uh, initiative that we already have a lot of events already in, uh, in March and April getting ready for Valley of Flowers, but we want to kind of make it a little more official. And back in the old days, the Valley of Flowers was the culmination of a spring cleaning effort by the city, and we want to introduce that back. And so we have the uh, uh, trash bash. We've always had the trash bash. This year it's on March 19th to uh, clean up uh, along the uh, stream beds around the city, and Mr. Barrett uh, is uh, very involved in that, and has been. And then we also have uh, two recycling events uh, on uh, April 16th, uh, electronic recycling at Ferdinand Park, and document shredding on April 21st uh, at St. Ferdinand Park. And then we also have a uh, force and garage sale on April 30th from 9 to uh, noon. Uh, and we're looking for, we may even interject another event or two uh, to try to uh, uh, encourage people to do the cleanup, spruce up, fix up, and planting flowers and trees and making Florissant as beautiful as it possible for the Valley of Flowers. Um, we also uh, wanted to mention we have uh, 
the uh, Party on the Ice, uh, Friday, March 4th. This is the, the uh, next D.A.R.E. event for 5th through 8th uh, graders. Uh, and will Kelsey be going to that one? I hope she will be. And uh, I, I, uh, I seen her the other day. We also have Jedi, Jedi Night training on March 6th. And that's a must. Kids only, sorry, council. Kids only. And then we have spring break camp for uh, uh, March 21st through March 25th, kind of like a summer camp, only much shorter. And then it was my honor to uh, visit with uh, Hayeswood Northwest Middle School uh, last week, and we talked about the uh, history of uh, the recorded history of uh, equal opportunity, uh, fast forwarding through Greece and Rome to the to the invention of the printing press, which started the information age, and we went all the way through, and we had a speech, uh, shared a speech with them from uh, Winston Churchill and Martin Luther King, and encouraged them to uh, uh, look at the glasses half full, that we've made a lot of progress for equal opportunity, especially in the republic form of government, and that we have, a, and it's up to them to finish the job. And it was very well received, and I uh, uh, hope I'll be invited back soon. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. The next meeting of the Florissant City Council will be March 14th, 2016 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Cyan makes a motion for adjournment that is seconded by Mr. Caputa. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The council shall stand adjourned.